Thank you for turning on and tuning in to this episode of Musings from a Small Island with your host, Saul Luckman. Musings from a Small Island is my new podcast inspired by my forthcoming memoir of the same name. In both podcast and book, my goal is to provide an artistic take on the world and the situations that affect us all, while serving it up with equal parts irreverent humor and wide-ranging philosophy of a generally optimistic nature. If you'd like to learn more about Musings from a Small Island, as well as my other books, I invite you to subscribe to my irregular newsletter at www.crowrising.com. By doing so, you'll also gain access to a treasure trove of free content, including complimentary online versions of at least two of my books. I also encourage you to follow my blog, Snooze to Awaken, Resources for Lucidity, at www.snoozetoawaken.com. There you can stay in the loop daily of what's really going on on this insane awakening planet we call home. Speaking of waking up, my award-winning novel, Snooze, A Story of Awakening, is serialized as an audiobook on my blog. So... Sweet dreams. Finally, on whatever venue you find yourself listening to this podcast, please take a moment to hit the follow button and give it a like if you like it. All right. I have a lot to cover today, so I'll get started, even though I am encircled by an army of leaf blowers in this condo community where I find myself a stranger in a strange land. Don't get me started on the su subject of leaf blowers. That's, a, that's like a thorn in my side. In any case, there's, a, there's been another development, another thorn in my side. I just got suspended from Twitter. Uh, I had actually two accounts, one for my healing work at the Phoenix Center for Regenetics and a personal account. And they both got simultaneously suspended when I posted a specific post, which I will share, uh, because uh, it's probably important if it got me immediately suspended after all the other stuff I've been posting, and I haven't, I haven't uh, censored myself very much there. So I'm finally down off of Twitter, finally down off of Facebook. Well, that happened, that happened months ago. So I'm completely deplatformed from the mainstream world, except for my YouTube account, which is a uh, Crow Rising is my handle over there. It's, if you're ever looking for me on any on any social media venue, you either find me with Crow Rising, Crow like the bird, Crow Rising, or Saul Luckman, S O L Luckman. Those are your two search options, and you'll probably find me. And please feel free to connect and say hello. I would like to uh, to uh, get to know you if you're. Uh, the kind of person I'd like to get to know, if you know what I mean. So I wanted to tie up some loose ends. This is the second podcast. This is the second Musings from a Small Island podcast. And I wanted to tie up a couple of loose ends and do a bit of an addendum relative to the, to the first podcast, which had to do a lot with CRT, critical race theory. And I wanted to say that uh, I had... I had set things up in that in that podcast to to uh share a, another epiphany that i had had when i couldn't sleep at night similar to the one i had before i started writing my novel cali the destroyer back at the end of 2019 when that's the when that's when i couldn't sleep and i downloaded the plot for this novel which is all about the pandemic and the vaccines and everything else i guess i really don't have to censor myself now you know because it's just probably <laughs> this is if, if, if anything goes on YouTube at all, it'll just be a little teaser of this. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pretend that this is all good to go. What I wanted to add is that after this dinner I had with this Chet fellow who turned out to be a totally brainwashed CRT drone, I, uh, I had another sleepless night where I, I was given the go ahead as it were, by my guidance or whatever you want to call it to begin this podcast so, so thus ergo here we are 
Another thing I wanted to uh, bring out here uh, is uh, this amazing letter on my blog. This is, a, this is my blog at snooze to awaken. This is number two, snooze to awaken.com. You can search for anonymous professor from UC Berkeley obliterates BLM injustice narrative in fabulous open letter. And I published this back in June of 2020. So it's been well over a year. And I wanted to read a few things that I highlighted at the time and ask you to reflect on those in light of perhaps your own observations relative to current events and the unfolding of this color revolution invo involving BLM and Antifa and that sort of thing. So here are some wonderful quotes that shore up some of my points from the first, from the first podcast in, in this, uh, this series. So here we go. So it's an anonymous letter, but it's some professor from UC Berkeley and that's, that's in California and that's the, that's the main university in California and that is a hotbed of critical race theory and all things woke. So be forewarned. The claim that the difficulties that the black community faces are entirely causally explained by exogenous factors in the form of white systemic racism, white supremacy, and other forms of white discrimination remains a problematic hypothesis that should be vigorously challenged by historians. Okay, that's number one. I also want to add, before I move on to another quote or two, three or four, is that this is a self-identified person of color writing. All right, moving on. The message is clear. Black lives only matter when whites take them. Black violence is expected and insoluble, while white violence requires explanation and demands solution. Please look into your hearts and see how monstrously bigoted this formulation truly is. And I have a little meme that follows this. Uh, you must be confusing me with someone who tolerates people who are complicit in the current pandemic of human rights and civil liberties violations. Except now it's going the opposite way. It's, it's, uh, from, it's uh, prioritized, the, the situation is prioritizing persons of color and demonizing white people. And, you know, that's just, just, just as crazy. They're equally crazy. And I hope you can see that. The total alliance of major corporations involved in human exploitation with BLM should be a warning flag to us. And yet this damning evidence goes unnoticed, purposefully ignored, or per perversely celebrated. We are the useful idiots of the wealthiest classes, carrying water for Jeff Bezos and other actual real modern day slavers. Now, one point I, I brought out a little bit in the first, in the first podcast, the, the, the first one in the series was that we have these, this divided situation where we have people in the, in the woke movement, and then we have people who are more, you might say conservative or traditionalists and one of the one of the problems is is the division itself and if you were looking at this from a purely relativistic standpoint you might say that well they're both right and they're both wrong but here's the problem with that there is a a real enemy here and i brought that out as well and it is this wealthy class of modern day slavers the puppet masters the cabal whatever, this is an academic writing about these people and not giving it that language, except for slavers, but cabal, illuminati, elites, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're up against. And it's, it's not as if both the, the left, as the, the new left and the right are sort of equally right and equally wrong here or equally aware or equally blind. No, the, the right, as much as I dislike a lot of the narrow mindedness that can go with that perspective, they understand that we have an enemy that is above this fake opposition, this contrived opposition between the left and the right. But the people on the, on the left today, the wokesters, 
They have no idea that that's the case. In fact, they mock the very notion that that could be the case. Thus, they are completely blind to what's really going on.